when you need to update the system without having an actual user doing the update in front of it, I think start to become quite interesting. Uh, you need to ensure that your system is still able to boot and function after the update, at least to the point of reverting the update if something went wrong. Otherwise, you may end up with this with what is called a brick device. Uh, it's called bricked because it's a useful as brick. And I'm not saying that bricks are not useful, uh, but probably your device has been uh, built for a different function and purpose. To avoid uh, this issue, uh, your update system must be atomic. This means that after you try to apply an update, the system will be fully up to date or in the previous state not in a kind of dangerous in-between state. You should also be able to recover uh, from a fi fail update or even to revert to the previous version uh, if your latest update is not working as expected. Uh, this can be done by keeping uh, two full images of your software. Uh, you update one and if something goes wrong, you still have the uh, other one. But this means uh, having to use double the storage and having at most two versions of your system on the device. OS3 works differently. Uh, it keeps a repository of all the files uh, in all their different versions. And the actual file system is built with arg links to those files. Uh, this means that you may have more than just two versions uh, on, on the device, and that usually does uh, take much less space than the two full copies required by the previous system. OS3 applies its changes at boot, and if something goes wrong and the system can't fully boot, it can revert back to the previous version uh, after uh, on the next reboot. Uh, with OS3, uh, you need to transfer only the file that you change between two versions, and this may help in saving bandwidth. Uh, data can be transferred uh, in background uh, without uh, affecting the current system operation. Uh, and this means that downtime during reboot can be minimized. <laughs> 